Hi, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, PEP webinar on female-focused financial inclusion uh, policies to increase rural productivity in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, I do understand that uh, people are uh, joining us uh, uh, slowly, uh, but let's just uh, quickly uh, go over some of the housekeeping uh, points just to uh, facilitate uh, you here. Uh, uh, on interpretation first, uh, we have a French and English interpretation available. Uh, to listen in your preferred language, uh, click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and then you can select the language which you wish to hear. Uh, we have the French instructions which have just appeared in the chat box as well on this subject. Uh, we'll also be broadcasting this event live on our Facebook page uh, and we are recording it and we'll share it on, your, uh, on our YouTube channel and website as well. Uh, and please feel free to circulate that across your networks or use it for later reference as well. Uh, we invite you to ask questions to our panelists at any time uh, during this uh, event. Please use the Q&A button, uh, button at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions. Uh, the panelists will answer these questions uh, after the main uh, discussion. Uh, we'll share the questions uh, the panelists are answering in the chat box. Uh, you're also free to use the chat box to communicate to the participants. Uh, but please do keep in mind this is a public session and uh, uh, we'd request that we all remain courteous uh, and, and remain to the topic. Uh, any content other than, of course, what we are discussing here or any content which is not related uh, to the event uh, would be uh, removed. Uh, just before I introduce my, my, my colleagues here, uh, a very brief introduction to what we are discussing. As you may have seen while you were uh, 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 registering for this meeting, there's a brief abstract on the web page. And I'd just like to repeat that for the information of all and for the recording as well. We have seen multiple policies to increase uh, rural productivity in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, which may uh, not have the intended uh, effects. Uh, despite appearing gender neutral, interventions including agriculture credit, and input subsidies have exacerbated the gender gaps as the obstacles that women face remain unchallenged. Uh, there's also a growing recognition that efforts to specifically uh, support women and help address gender inequalities, which in turn enhance productivity and economic growth. Uh, understanding and meeting the varied needs of women is an essential element for sustainable and equitable decision-making. Uh, so in uh, Benin, Burkina Faso, and uh, Malawi, uh, teams of uh, local PEP researchers and policymakers explored ways to increase uh, women's financial inclusion and empowerment as drivers of uh, rural productivity. Uh, members of these PEP teams are here with us, and they'll be discussing how governments in sub-Saharan Africa can boost rural productivity through female-focused policies uh, during uh, this meeting. Uh, I am uh, honored to introduce uh, my colleagues. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Dr. Rose uh, Fiamohe. She's Associate Professor at University of Abome, uh, Kalavi, Benin. Uh, uh, her PEP project uh, was titled Accessing a Finance uh, for Productive Rural Employment Opportunities for Women in Benin and, and uh, an introduction to this project can be found on PEP website as well. Uh, I'm also uh, honored to have with me uh, Dieter von Fintel, Associate Professor at Stellenbosch University, uh, South Africa. Uh, his PEP project uh, was titled The Unintended Consequences of the Malawi Farm Input Subsidy Program, uh, Women's Entrepreneurship and Financial Inclusion. Uh, and we also have uh, Dr. Yaya Kai, who's researcher at Pan-African Research Center for Economic and Social Development uh, in Burkina Faso. Uh, so the proceedings uh, would essentially uh, follow uh, myself asking them uh, three questions, uh, and we'll just be displaying the first question on the screen. And then uh, I, would, I would be uh, requesting uh, my, my, my colleagues 
uh, to come in uh, and, and give their interventions. So a question one, uh, as you'll see on your screen, uh, we want to ask our, our panelists today, what policies uh, have your countries introduced to increase rural productivity and have they been uh, successful? Uh, and of course, within this question, uh, they would of course uh, be summarizing the main interventions, uh, who are these interventions targeting and what limits these interventions uh, may have. Um, so, uh, so let me uh, invite uh, Dieter first for his uh, intervention, uh, and then perhaps uh, I can follow up with the other panelists. Uh, I'll, I'll request all panelists to limit themselves uh, to five minutes each, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vakar. Um, we were a team from both Malawi and South Africa who studied the Malawi Farm Input Subsidy, which has been around since 2005. And it's particularly been targeted at poor households and also, interestingly enough, female household heads. And what they do is, is they provide vouchers for fertilizer and for seeds, essentially to subsidize the agricultural productivity. The, the only gender aspect that was important here was that it was targeted at female heads. And, but one of the big results from a lot of the literature is, is that when the seasons are good, and this is something we also found, that the subsidy raises productivity in agriculture. It also importantly improves market participation and also gives households additional income from cash crops. And this is, this is something that's very important. So when we started this project, we thought, well, a lot of women farm on smallholder farms in Malawi, and they are very involved with the production. So in many senses, the act economic activity that they're involved in has been subsidized by the government. And this, this subsidy brings in liquidity for the household. It brings in cash. And therefore, the presumption should be is, is that there should be more cash in the hands of women. And this would allow them to obtain more credit, become more financially included. And this would then also then allow them to diversify their businesses. And this is potentially a very important way to change a situation in Malawi where a majority of women are financially excluded and don't have the kind of capital to be able to invest in various business act activities. But what we found was not what we expected. In fact, we, we found that these subsidies did not have these benefits for women. Uh, they did not improve financial inclusion. They did not improve entrepreneurship. And we then had to explore what were the deeper issues at play here. Um, and the real obstacle is, is that women generally have very low levels of decision-making power. And this includes the women who farm the land in, on small agricultural plots and who invest a lot of their time to farm to, uh, into cultivating these crops, which generate incomes for households. And the, the key here is this really just a, a bargaining power dynamic whereby many women just don't have that bargaining power inside the household. And this then means that they eventually don't get integrated into markets. They don't get integrated into the banking system, into the financial system. And it, it reinforces a vicious circle whereby um, even though households are doing better, the women in those households are not necessarily doing better. Another contributing factor is also, uh, which we look at briefly is, is land rights. Um, in 2016, the Malawi government uh, proposed adjustments to land laws, really securing women's land rights. And one of the things which we consider in our work is, is that land rights should reinforce women's bargaining position. And that should then also promote their, their ability to be able to use these subsidies to their own benefit and to become more integrated into the market and financially included. However, because land rights are also not very well enforced in communities, especially um, given the, the traditional structures of matrilocality and patrilocality, um, land rights are not secure regardless of the system which 
uh, households operate within. And the, the point is really that it's, it's the operation at communities which doesn't enforce these rights and therefore also will not support women in accessing other forms of economic inclusion. And essentially we, we view this as the obstacle to why, for instance, something like a farm input subsidy, which should benefit women, doesn't benefit women. In fact, what we found is, is that these farm input subsidies made it worse for women. And actually men uh, gained more bargaining power. And this was, this was quite alarming and surprising for us. Thank you. Thank you, Dieter. And uh, this goes back to uh, the abstract in which I was informing that policies intended uh, uh, to narrow down the gap uh, in turn uh, ended up exacerbating and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very timely finding. Uh, thank you. And uh, Rose, let me bring the same question to you, please. Thank you very much, uh, Vaka. Um, um, uh, before uh, I will switch in French, so please, uh, participants, uh, turn into French. Thank you. So, merci, Monsieur Vaca. So, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Vaca, for this very relevant uh, question. Uh, but before I answer, uh, let me first of all express uh, our gratitude uh, to uh, Pepper for the opportunity that they've given us uh, to, uh, uh, to to share the um, result outcomes uh, that uh, we have arrived at. Uh, we're very, very grateful. Now, as, as far as the question is concerned, I can say that uh, the government uh, of uh, Benin, uh, in uh, collaboration uh, with its uh, development uh, partners, uh, has done a lot of uh, work uh, to improve, uh, generally speaking, uh, the access uh, to credit uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, different uh, economic uh, actors, and especially uh, the access of women to microfinance in the rural economy, for example. We can say that amongst uh, the major players who are involved in, uh, um, in income generating uh, activities, uh, the uh, women uh, represent about 75% of the targeted uh, public, but the majority of these women are victim of being financially excluded. This is a situation that is of greater concern and which reminds us uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that a number of programs are in the in the government uh, and the women are excluded uh, financially and uh, we with the government is trying to rectify that in 1977 uh, Benin uh, had uh, had, had uh, set up uh, uh, agricultural mutual mutual uh, offices uh, which uh, was meant uh, to offer uh, lending uh, uh, services uh, both to the producers uh, as well as uh, civil servants uh, as well as uh, to uh, uh, businessmen and women. In 1993, the government uh, in Benin had uh, set up uh, mechanisms uh, for financing, uh, uh, alternative financing uh, mechanisms uh, for, uh, for, for, for those who were not included by the banking system. Now we can give the example of uh, the uh, project uh, for small and uh, medium enterprises in Benin and the support uh, uh, for uh, small uh, enterprises uh, in Benin. And uh, so uh, well, considering uh, the commitment of the government, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the the, the, uh, the, the micro institutions wanted uh, to come up with something that was uh, credible. And uh, because they're uh, looking at, uh, uh, at minimizing uh, transaction costs uh, and uh, the exclusion of uh, the, the microfinance institutions are uh, preferred uh, people that are able to pay back uh, and activities uh, that have a high profit uh, level. And therefore they would uh, 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 exclude uh, uh, agriculture from uh, being uh, a, a, benef a, a, a profitable activity. And uh, so the government uh, tried to uh, finance uh, uh, microfinancing organizations uh, by uh, in 2006 uh, in order to respond uh, to the specific uh, needs uh, of uh, those uh, levels of the population uh, that needed uh, financial inclusion uh, and uh, this therefore uh, a, a number of programs uh, microfinance uh, programs that uh, came up uh, and I can mention uh, the uh, program for financing uh, agri uh, agriculture and the rural activities uh, the uh, program uh, rural credit uh, for the uh, poorest uh, but you have to notice uh, that uh, the group uh, the group said that we're targeted by by these uh, programs uh, where farmers uh, and uh, 
the, uh, the the population that are, as a, a vulnerable to poverty and so on and so forth. But after ten years of the implementation of uh, this uh, program, uh, this microfinancing uh, program, uh, the NCCP had shown that it had a limit in terms of uh, uh, the uh, loans that had not been paid back by those who had borrowed uh, the money. Now, in 2013, and in this context, uh, the government of uh, Benin uh, put in place other measures uh, to uh, try and uh, confront uh, this issue of paying uh, by, after having learned from uh, previous programs. And it is uh, in this way that uh, under the cover of uh, reforms, uh, the National Fund for Microfinance uh, tried to experiment uh, with a new product uh, that was called uh, um, mobile microcredit uh, that later became came a Lafia microcredit to be able to confront the problems that had been encountered by other programs. Now, this is a, an innovative program and it had a, a mobile credit and uh, it uh, needed, there was a micro insurance, um, education and uh, management of loans. So that's what I'd like to say very quickly in response to your answer, uh, um, Vaka, thank you. Thank you, Rose, really appreciate this. And uh, very glad to hear that there is some learning in the process as well. And the fact that uh, yeah, some of the things may not have worked have prompted uh, the government to take uh, corrective uh, actions. Um, and now finally, let me uh, turn to uh, Yaya, your response on the first question, please. Merci. Euh, concernant le Burkina Faso, en fait, comme euh, la plupart des pays de la sous-région, le développement socio-économique du Burkina Faso est basé en grande partie. If you're trying to speak, I think there may be uh, some issue because uh, at least I can't hear you on my end. Yeah. Uh -huh. C'est OK. OK. Oui, oui, oui. OK, sorry, I think, yeah. OK, thank you, thank you. I think we're OK now. Oui. OK. Voilà, donc, le so, I, I was saying that uh, as far as the Burkina Faso is concerned, um, the, the, uh, we, we were talking about, um, um, sorry, his Sorry, we, I have a problem. Uh, sorry, I have a problem. Can I just... Uh, uh, okay. So sorry, there was a problem. I couldn't hear. I, I was saying that in the rural areas, Uh, that the, the main um, uh, economic activity is uh, is agriculture, and the women represent more than uh, how, than fifty percent of the people. Work. In order to improve uh, to uh, improve uh, the income or to increase uh, the income of uh, the rural uh, uh, population, the, the the government has come up with a number of uh, solutions. And uh, the last one is uh, the national uh, development uh, program, uh, in which uh, uh, the uh, government of Burkina Faso uh, 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 addressed uh, issues that uh, that have to do with the well-being of the population of uh, Burkina Faso, and uh, uh, it, it looked uh, into to a certain uh, extent uh, they, they, they addressed the issue of lack of equity between men and women. Now, in order to uh, respond to a number of constraints, the government uh, adopted a number of uh, measures and uh, uh, trying to put uh, to to pin, put in place agricultural insurance so that uh, means that uh, uh, agriculture is. Uh, considered as a very major uh, income uh, generating uh, activity. The second uh, measure was um, to, to have a guarantee uh, fund. Now, each uh, one of these uh, the people have access to this uh, microfinance that, that uh, would make it possible for them to have that. And the third measure has to do with the, with the laws that uh, uh, encourage the uh, indigenous ways of accessing uh, uh, credit, uh, 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 which means uh, the, the, the issues, uh, yeah. 
um, and this is very important uh, and um, considering the, the, the costs uh, in, in the market and uh, using these uh, in ways. Now, um, as far as the, the, the targeted public is concerned, the, uh, the government is trying to uh, encourage social security for everybody, especially for the youth and the women and the four measures. Uh, uh, f first of all, uh, the uh, um, support to women, as I said. Now, when you talk about uh, policies, uh, we can see that there are a number of uh, advantages in uh, uh, allowing women uh, to have access uh, to agricultural uh, 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 credit uh, and, um, and and there is a lot of uh, inequality between men and women as i said now the limit of uh, the, the, the the policies is that uh, the, the main one is that uh, the, the different uh, constraints uh, in accessing credit have not been taken into account now the current uh, policy it says that people should have access to credit, but that has not been possible. But there are two other groups of uh, producers at the agricultural level who have other uh, constraints and who have not been taken into account by the existing uh, policies. So the first uh, group of uh, producers uh, is uh, the, 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 the group that uh, has does not have access uh, to uh, credit. Uh, they, they, they do not have uh, the, the kind of uh, um, money that they expected to have in order to uh, finance uh, the, the, the projects. And uh, then uh, um, there's a second group. And the second group has to do with uh, those who are excluded uh, by the financial system. Uh, the group of the uh, co-producers and uh, agricultural women, uh, the, the issue that arises, the main issue that arises uh, as far as women agricultural uh, uh, people are concerned is the issue of credit. I hope that the sound has improved. It was difficult, but we tried. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Yaya. This was this was very clear, and uh, and and uh, I think uh, uh, you have rightly pointed out that uh, perhaps uh, the design of uh, the policies now going forward has to be uh, informed by the past learning. Uh, and 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 thank you uh, uh, for being comprehensive here. Uh, uh, so, so so colleagues, in this session, basically, uh, in, the, in 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 response to question number one, what we have tried to see is that in the three countries, what were the main interventions, who they targeted, and what success they had. But uh, we would quickly like to move to the second uh, question here, uh, and and given that the. Uh, uh, there, there is related discussion, but we, we, we also want to now sort of discuss on uh, what are the recommendations by our researchers, by the PEP researchers, on how can these policies uh, be made more effective and what, uh, uh, what, what uh, tangible uh, sort of uh, 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 design changes can be made to the policy implementation changes can be introduced uh, to this policies. And within this question, we would like to uh, sort of also uh, uh, request our, our panelists if they can summarize their findings on, uh, on, on, on how they feel that rural productivity uh, could be increased uh, by considering the specific barriers um, uh, faced by uh, women. Uh, and, and for this, I would uh, now, uh, in, in terms of changing a sequence Changing the sequence a bit, I would start with Rose. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I just want to remind that uh, the Q&A is open for you. You can uh, post your questions and comments, uh, and the panelists would be happy to uh, answer them uh, uh, in, in the Q&A box or later in the discussion. So please feel free if you would like to remain interactive here. Uh, uh, Rose, it's over to you for question two. Okay, uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur Vaca. Uh, avant de Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vaca. But before I answer this second uh, question, I would like to uh, recall that uh, in uh, my answer to the first uh, question, I had uh, pointed out uh, that uh, the program, the, the, the public uh, microfinance uh, uh, program, uh, was confronted with a lot of uh, non paid loans. And in order to resolve uh, that problem, the government uh, of uh, Benin has uh, come up uh, with an innovative uh, uh, method of uh, financial. Um, 
inclusion, which is a lot for microcredit, uh, in spite of uh, this uh, new system of uh, financial inclusion, and especially um, uh, the, the one that uh, tries to include as many women as possible, and especially women in the rural areas, uh, it still remains a factor that this system cannot can only become a sustainable solution if uh, the economic uh, only if the economic uh, activities are, are, are sustainable and they, that, that uh, they can pay that debt. So it is important to point out uh, that uh, there is very little information that uh, shows uh, that access uh, to financing, even informal uh, financing, uh, creates uh, uh, opportunities uh, for sustainable and independent employment uh, uh, possibilities uh, in Benin and especially for women. And so we can say that uh, uh, that income generation activities in the rural areas of Benin remain um, the, the, uh, the, 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 either those uh, activities that have to do with, with, with the subsistence. And the question, therefore, that we have to ask ourselves is what kind of a financing, of course, can we use in order to ensure that there is a financial uh, inclusion in, a no in an innovative way and for which activities, which are productive activity for rural women, which would mean that they are uh, economically empowered and that there would be improvement of their well being as well as the well being of their homes. And now to respond uh, to the uh, question that uh, Mr. Bakar had asked, I would like to suggest that, uh, uh, first of all, the decision makers uh, should avoid uh, coming up with the uh, generic and uh, uh, generic uh, solutions uh, for rural business uh, men and women uh, because uh, there is a lot of uh, differences in the rural uh, economies and so we're talking about uh, defining the uh, criteria for targeting uh, different uh, groups uh, uh, so that uh, they can include uh, financially as many people as possible, especially rural women, and take into account, uh, for example, criteria such as uh, the kind of economic activities, uh, the human capital that uh, would uh, be used uh, in the, 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 the communities and the age of uh, the, uh, the, the stakeholders. And uh, the second thing that should be taken into account, we like to suggest that uh, the decision makers uh, should come up with a specific uh, program for uh, financing uh, rural women, rural business women in uh, conditions uh, that, are, uh, that are the same as uh, the conditions that are in the rural areas uh, in form of financing that would be based on uh, uh, informal uh, financing, such as uh, 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 tabletop uh, financing. Uh, and uh, then uh, there the, the should be also the, the performance that uh, should be taken into account. Uh, um, and uh, these uh, rural, rural women are used to having informal uh, formal uh, financing and they have activities uh, that uh, bring in a lot of uh, a little of profit because in order to respond uh, to the demands from the market and uh, to increase their business, uh, uh, the uh, credit uh, that is uh, uh, given uh, by microcredit uh, organizations uh, is not enough. And therefore there has to be the programs uh, that are supposed to support uh, the business uh, women that would be in at the rural women. Uh, and especially when, in their, when they're young without uh, any conditionalities uh, until they are able, until, until they have a flexible uh, uh, loans, uh, uh, right up to the adult age with adults, uh, there should be more stricter, stricter credit, uh, credit conditions uh, and more thank you. formal. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Rose. And uh, I think uh, your, your, your point was very important uh, when you said that uh, in, in our interest to increase the number of beneficiaries sometimes, we may neglect uh, the size of uh, the credit given to each beneficiary. And if the size is too less, that would really impact uh, the outcomes of the program. So thank you. And uh, uh, I, I would now come to Dieter, uh, please, for your response on question two. Uh, thank you, Vakar. Um, as we speak, uh, everybody who's familiar with Malawi would know that the policy environment has changed quite a lot in the last year with the election of a new government. And the subsidy program has actually been expanded quite substantially to become the affordable inputs program, and which would like to target every smallholder farmer in Malawi and not just the poorest. And uh, in some senses, that's a very positive thing because it means there's uh, incredible inclusion that can happen through this and a much greater reach through this. 
However, I think what we've learned from our research is, is that it's not enough to target just the poorest households or to reach households. We have to target the people inside the households. And because women are often involved in creating livelihoods, in creating farming, we, one needs to find ways to target the women inside the household and not just the household head. Because often the person who should be the beneficiary is a woman who is farming the land or who is running a small business or whatever the case might be, but who is living inside a male headed household. So to, as in the past where there's been a focus on female headed households, one should look at how to reach women inside male headed households with different policies. Now the Malawi government is using an electronic identification system to distribute this new affordable inputs program and to get these um, uh, subsidies to households. And one could think of innovative ways of using these electronic means to um, actually reach women and not men. And when I say women, not men, I actually should refine that and say, because a lot of women are farming the land, the criteria should most likely be that one should reach the person who's responsible for actually cultivating the land. And in this way, the production capital reaches that person and eventually the decisions that this person uh, can make over income from cash crops will be, will be more likely to be made by this individual. Um, of course, this needs to be supported by land rights. Um, if and other just acknowledgement of women's rights more fundamentally in communities. If, if women's rights to other production capital are not respected or not enforced, then changing the beneficiary criteria will also not happen because of this balance of power inside of households. And I think that, that's a very important thing to think about. Um, so what I would suggest is, is really finding ways to target women inside households. If this is uh, successful, what could happen then is, is that these women have more say about what they produce and they, they then also become more integrated in the markets and one can start a virtuous cycle instead of a, a vicious cycle. Um, because if, if these individuals, if these women then sell on the market, they become more financially included, they'll also be more likely to be able to access other credit markets. And once they access other credit markets, it would also allow them to diversify their business. And I think that's one of the key uh, outcomes one would, would like to achieve from um, um, uh, financial inclusion. It's essentially that women have options to pursue other avenues rather than just uh, farming the land to to and not reaping the benefits from that. Uh, thank you. I'll stop there. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Uh, po po point very well taken. Uh, uh, the balance uh, or, or the power structure within the household really matters. And one needs to focus uh, who's benefiting within uh, the household. Uh, Yaya, your response, please. Now, on or to to get these uh, financial inclusion policies to be more uh, uh, efficient, you need to look into what you're doing right at the beginning of uh, the formulation of the policy. We need to look at the content of the uh, policy when it comes to uh, credit, uh, ask us to credit. We look at the money that uh, was borrowed, uh, those whose uh, requests, applications have been uh, rejected. Uh, we need to also have uh, a training. The policy should also uh, have such a program. Uh, they or we, we should also include uh, their uh, uh, partners. This is what uh, we can say as far as uh, this question is concerned. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, uh, Yaya. And your point around uh, uh, training uh, outreach is, is extremely important. We have noted at other places as well how the uptake of such financial inclusion products uh, highly depends on the type uh, or, or the effort that goes into uh, outreach uh, and, and reaching out to the beneficiaries, increasing their awareness around accessing these, these financial inclusion products. Uh, I'll be happy to quickly move to the last question before which uh, I think we need to take the Q&A as well. And the last question is with regards to uh, the changing times now. And we have seen that uh, uh, while uh, the, these uh, FEC projects may have started in uh, pre-COVID times, at least some of them, but now, of course, we are living in a much more challenging or uncertain environment. So how timely are your recommendations uh, in the context of the COVID-19 uh, crisis? Uh, and, and of course, uh, within this, you may like to touch upon or briefly explain the argument of why your recommendations are uh, vital in responding uh, to, uh, uh, to, to the recurrent waves of COVID-19 and to help uh, recover from a period of low growth, low productivity, and lower levels of uh, employment as countries see various forms of uh, lockdowns uh, going forward. These will, of course, have implications for gender gap as well. So uh, let me now uh, start with uh, Yaya uh, for his response on question number three. Uh, Thank you. So recommendations that we made are current and could be uh, could produce good results. These uh, come from uh, the work that we have uh, car car carried out on credit constraints, that is uh, agricultural credit. So the recommendations are two. The first is uh, we should have a guarantee fund for credit uh, that is uh, going to women. We should also have financial education for the women involved in agricultural production. And the second recommendation that uh, uh, these policies should adapt uh, the content to all the different uh, credit constraints. A number of uh, constraints are, are, are there. The, the well, first is the guarantee. This is uh, uh, a guarantee that affects women more and the other constraint is that they we need to have security the, gar, the guarantee we having a, a guarantee in the form of uh, uh, fixed assets is a difficult thing for women only 10 percent of the women involved in agriculture have this kind of guarantee. The other problem is getting permission from their partner, uh, given It, given uh, this, uh, the, 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 the culture of this uh, region, women have difficulties in getting the consent of uh, the, uh, their partners. There, it, there is also lack of information uh, and this uh, has forms an obstacle to be able to follow the procedures for getting credit. This is what we came up with, and I thank you. Yes, very, very, very sound point, Yaya. And uh, uh, information costs certainly uh, are leading to, uh, 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 of course, one cause of uh, inequality in this entire process. 
but of course, uh, information costs are also preventing the access to, to, to these financial inclusion interventions. So thank you for this. And I'll quickly move to uh, Rose now for her intervention. That was you. Uh, thank you. On this uh, uh, cash matter, as far as we are concerned, uh, although the findings of the research did not uh, bring out uh, uh, a direct link between COVID-19 and the micro enterprises. I, this crisis led to a lot of difficulties for many enterprises. For example, as far as uh, the literature on enterprises, uh, there was uh, a there was a, a, a reduction in the business. The, those firms that had come up with the credit, had gotten credit, could not, were not in a position to repay the credit. And the business uh, volume for uh, small and medium uh, and uh, medium and uh, <clears throat> all enterprises uh, went down those uh, firms that are managed by women uh, their business volume went down much more than it did for those that are managed by men so so if we say that these different categories of entrepreneurs did have credit, you will be you will agree with me that they will be able to repay their loans in spite of the shocks coming from COVID-19. I think we need to have a link. We need to look at the first recommendations for those who are govern us and the uh, microfinancial institu institutions, uh, they need to look into uh, the, this matter. This means that uh, these uh, MFIs should come up with more uh, flexible uh, measures so that uh, they themselves and those they lend to are able to face the shocks arising from, uh, from uh, COVID-19, particularly if there is a negative shock. I would like to say that to, without funding and there will be no creation and there's no creation of wealth for everybody. And this is what I can say with regard to this question. And I thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I think uh, uh, COVID-19, of course, uh, invites us to look into uh, the design of the interventions, uh, particularly with the viewpoints to uh, ensuring resilience uh, of uh, these uh, beneficiaries uh, or those participating uh, in, in, in the program. Uh, uh, Dieter, uh, uh, if I can request you for your uh, intervention, please. Yes, thank you. Um, the COVID crisis is of course not the only crisis. Um, uh, we, we think of climate change as being a big issue. We, and these directly Im impact these farmers and the current move to move to the all affordable input subsidy program that will reach all farmers it wasn't directly in response to COVID but I think it came at the right time for COVID it also came at the right time for uh, climate change to support small farmers so I think our recommendations now are timely not just to improve uh, overall productivity with what is in essence a very large fiscal policy stimulus, but it is actually to improve the targeting at a time of crisis. Um, so I think it's 
Uh, in some senses, our recommendations transcend time, but they become even more important in times of crisis. If women play a big role in ensuring food security, uh, then they should have that ability to do so, and they should uh, be given the tools to, to do so. And targeting these subsidies could help tremendously with that. If it does have then the intended second round effects of improving financial inclusion and improving entrepreneurship, the, the long run effect would be diversification of business and diversification of activity, which would then actually support households even more. So in some senses, our recommendations are, are very long run uh, and they intend to uh, bring about a long run change to a long run problem. But I would say that COVID-19 has highlighted the problem to be quite severe in just in understanding the, the inequalities which we see um, and knowing that tackling those inequalities is very difficult. But I think what times of crisis show us is uh, just in which ways we need to tackle those inequalities. So just uh, as a final thought, I think that um, the policy environment has been in place all the time to improve productivity for rural workers and for rural farms. But I think it's it's more a case of how those uh, are targeted. And this can be good for both the current period, but also over the long run. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dieter. And uh, of course, I would, I would uh, thank uh, uh, all the panelists uh, for responding to these uh, questions and highlighting the findings from the research. I would quickly move to the Q&A session. I do see that uh, we are uh, three minutes behind the time. Uh, so we are receiving uh, some uh, uh, questions and uh, uh, I, I'll be picking them up uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, requesting our panelists to respond to them. I, I do see two questions from our colleague Habiba. Maybe if she would like to uh, come in and we can uh, turn on uh, her mic so that she can uh, let us know who the question is to and uh, please feel free to ask. Hello. Yes, yeah, uh, hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the discussion. Um, I um, I had actually uh, a question that I think relates to um, to the discussion from all of uh, of you uh, regarding the um, the way uh, producers, female producers, or female entrepreneurs, um, uh, the way we can target them. And, and I think uh, it, it's very much in line with what uh, Dieter was telling us, uh, the fact that they most often are part of a household. And, um, and indeed, it's uh, completely uh, uh, reasonable for the household as a unit to take a decision to take a credit or not. That's what we would expect, whether you're in a developing country or a developed country. However, um, it's not clear to me how we can uh, target women in, the, in, in this credit that she could get could very much be invested in the project that's um, uh, managed by their husband or their father uh, simply because the, uh, the return to this investment is higher. And that's the, the most efficient uh, decision for the household. So uh, I don't know if we have any evidence on that, um, and what would be uh, what would be a good policy, a good, tar well targeted policy in this context. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Habiba and uh, uh, Dieter. Uh, would you like to uh, come in here? Yes, thank you. I think that's that's an excellent question. Um, and it really speaks at, to the structural issues that are difficult to solve. So if we were to say in the context of a subsidy, make the woman the primary recipient. In other words, if she's farming the land, she gets the subsidy. You're right, it might not necessarily solve the problems automatically. For, for instance, we, in our research, we also found uh, ironically that in matrilocal communities where uh, couples live close to the, the maternal side of the family, 
to the women's side of the family, women actually lose this bargaining power with subsidies. Um, and this, this really surprised us and it, it really highlights to us some of these structural issues that you speak to. So targeting is I think one leg of the, the intervention. It needs to be complemented by other interventions. And I think particularly in the case of Malawi, it's also about looking at much broader rights, um, land rights, for instance, which often disadvantage women, even though the legal provisions actually directly target women. And this, this more concerted ownership uh, towards women would also allow these other interventions to be more effective towards women. But the problem is, of course, implementation. And I think the, the big issue here is, is working with communities uh, to, to changing these attitudes. So these are more deeper issues which need to, I think, complement some of these interventions for them to be successful. Thank you, uh, Dieter. Um, uh, let me uh, come to Rose and I see two questions uh, here. Uh, and the first one was asked by uh, Mohammed Ashfaq, where he wanted to know if there were any practical examples where uh, uh, agriculture uh, credit issues faced by a female had been resolved and if there are any case studies around them. And uh, also uh, there was a question by Faden, uh, uh, do you think there is any correlation between literacy level and financial exclusion? Uh, and if yes, what uh, is the government doing uh, to, to uh, increase uh, rural women literacy level? So over to uh, Rose for both these questions, please. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for these two questions, uh, these very pertinent questions. As I said a few minutes ago in my contribution, I said that there is a problem of unpaid credit, unpaid loans. Very often in the rural areas, these are, it is households that take decision when women are rarely heads of the household. So the policy that uh, targeting inclusion, financial inclusions, they have to include the head of the household. So there should be sensitization of the head of the household so that he is informed about the microcredit, that is one thing, and women who should be targeted to be able to get microcredit or credit in general, they have to be involved in an income generating activity. If these two conditions are met, I think we will see the impact on women's welfare. What can the government do with the different programs or macro credit programs? They tried to introduce a technology of mobile micro credit sensitization and management of microcredit. This is what I can say uh, in response to your thank question. You. Thank you. Th th thank you, Rose. Uh, let me uh, turn to <coughs> Yaya and I see that we have uh, a question from uh, uh, Ma Ma Mawusi. Uh, uh, and the question is that beyond the capacity building of rural women in entrepreneurship and credit management, uh, have efforts been made to improve the numeracy, the numeracy and transliteration of beneficiaries? So, so I think the question is about increasing or how can the financial literacy of rural women be increased? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah.
Sorry, I think you may be on mute if you're trying to speak. Oui, voilà, les politiques actuelles n'interviennent pas uh, suffisamment de... The, the problem of lack of sensitization, what we recommended uh, that uh, they be involved in, uh, in sensitization policy, not necessarily financial education. Uh, this is being done at the national level. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I also see uh, another uh, question from uh, Jordan, and uh, maybe I can, I can uh, request uh, uh, once again, if, if I can uh, uh, request uh, probably any of you three to take this up because uh, uh, it's not mentioned that, that uh, who the question is directed to, but it's an important one. And uh, I think the point is about the use of secure rural land titles as a financial guarantee. And do you think that land security program in rural areas can improve access to land by small uh, producers? And uh, would you think of the joint surety as a means of financial inclusion? Uh, so, so any one of you who would like to answer, please, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, if I may. Um, sure. I think that's a, that's a very good question about land rights. Um, I, I think what we often see in many cases is where land rights are undermined. And we see this in Malawi, especially for women, where their land rights are not respected, we see how the negative impacts uh, on them and their well-being. The question of whether land rights will definitely uh, improve uh, access to credit, access to markets, uh, whether joint surety can help. That's, I think that's an open question that's very context specific. Um, we, the empirical evidence does suggest that land titles, for instance, or even joint surety can help, uh, especially local economy, economies to grow. And this comes from a variety of economies across the continent, across the globe. Um, but it's not universal, and I think very specific contexts have to come about. If it would achieve gender equality, this is what uh, our proposal is, is that we, we hope that that would be the case. Um, but I think it also depends on local customs. Uh, do people, do informal institutions uh, respect these land rights? And do people see um, these land rights as valuable and that, that can stand surety? For, for other financial measures. Um, we see it working in many cases, but I don't think it's necessarily universal. It does depend on the informal institutions uh, supporting that. Yes, thank you. Uh, Rose or Yaya, would, uh, would, would, would you like to, uh, would you have any additional points to add here? Oui, 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 je pense que la sécurisation foncière est, est, est très importante pour euh, faciliter un peu, enfin, pour accélérer l'inclusion financière parce que l'accès au crédit, généralement, c'est pour l'investissement, pour acheter du matériel, pour acheter, voilà, pour rendre, augmenter la productivité de la terre. Voilà. Et si la terre n'est pas disponible, de toute façon, si le, la situation n'est pas si la terre est disponible pour une longue est très réticente à investir pendant à investir lourdement dans, dans la terre et avoir sa, la terre pour soi-même est une garantie qu'on peut faire un investissement de long terme But a long-term investment on this but we note in Burkina Faso this is that that in certain regions of the country every year we call that uh, and women is obliged to change land to be able to move there's some instability so 
this is seems to be a big handicap as far as access to credit is concerned. Thank yes, you. Thank, thank, thank you, uh, Yaya. Uh, appreciate the responses here. Uh, and Rose, in case there is uh, no uh, other, uh, would, would you like to respond? Please. Oui, peut-être uh, rapidement. Uh, yes, very quickly, I'd like to say this. The, the issue of, uh, uh, of of uh, title deeds uh, is a general is a problem a generalized problem in Africa and in uh, Benin in particular and even uh, more so in the rural areas. You know that today, with the first guarantee that one has, one has in order to have access to uh, to loans is to have land. You have to have uh, a piece of land if you're going to uh, have a, a collateral. Um, a, a collateral for any loans uh, that you're going to get uh, is a form of uh, guarantee that you're able to pay the, the, the loan. But when you take into account uh, the issue of urbanization, which uh, is actually reducing uh, little by little the availability of land. Now, I would like to suggest that, uh, uh, that the governments and uh, financial institutions should actually rethink the issue of collateral for accessing uh, loans. Now, in Benin, currently, the current the government had actually included in its uh, uh, program of activities uh, uh, for Benin the fact that uh, the issue of uh, collateral uh, for young business people and women business people uh, who are financially excluded, uh, that that collateral could be dealt with differently. And so the government is actually in the uh, process of thinking how they can uh, uh, put in place a policy of uh, guarantee that would support uh, these women and these youth. Now, that's what I'd like to say as far as the land issue is concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. Appreciate the uh, response. I understand that we have gone a bit over time, uh, but uh, I, I do see uh, some more questions pouring in. And, uh, uh, and in case our panelists would have time, uh, they can probably uh, stay on uh, to answer some of uh, these questions, but we just want to respect time over here. So for everyone else, uh, uh, you know, we just want to sort of uh, close on time. So let me just say here that this has been an excellent uh, session. I have uh, learned a lot uh, and uh, uh, I think a couple of uh, things I won't uh, aim to summarize over here. But I think a couple of things which are extremely important uh, given uh, the pandemic times in which we are passing. Uh, first, of course, is to have a, a resilience lens to this discussion, given that uh, we rightly noted that uh, COVID-19 is not the only crisis which is being faced by uh, rural women uh, per se. And there may be other uh, recurrent or sim simultaneous uh, crises which they may be uh, facing. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so, uh, sustained uh, funding uh, cannot uh, be ruled out here. Uh, uh, finance and funding is something which, which uh, they will need more than ever in order to face uh, uh, the, these simultaneous or simultaneity in the crisis which they face. Face. Second, of course, uh, targeting mechanisms need to be improved, uh, and targeting mechanisms not just across regions, but uh, uh, beneficiaries across households, even within the households. So that was a second uh, key takeaway. Uh, third, there are various uh, costs other than the operational or administrative costs, which go into managing programs of financial inclusion or input subsidy or, uh, or, or, or farm sector loans. And in that respect, uh, we see that costs associated with information, um, uh, training, outreach, uh, these have to be factored in the program uh, so that an uptake of these uh, programs can be insured by the beneficiaries. Uh, uh, we also learned that learning uh, as we go along or action uh, learning is also important. And uh, as the program provides uh, uh, learning on the gaps, learnings or new opportunities that may emerge as the program is being implemented, uh, those learnings have to be fed back into the program, uh, which is very important uh, given in, 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 in these times, of course, uh, when we are scarce on resources and one would like to uh, have uh, uh, more efficiency going into uh, things like public investments or even investments by development uh, partners going forward. So as I said, there were other uh, more important and uh, other important uh, interventions as well, but I won't aim to summarize here. 
Uh, I will, however, encourage uh, uh, participants to go and read uh, the findings uh, from, from the research by these three uh, research teams who have invested and uh, really uh, uh, given so much time and energy to this research. There are some good findings, which of course you will come across once you've read uh, the, the, the research reports and, and, and the papers. So let me thank uh, uh, my, my colleagues here, uh, Dieter, uh, Yaya and Rose. Let me thank uh, the, the, the PEP team, uh, which uh, uh, hosted us, which, which organized this session for us. And of course, more importantly for, for our participants who took out time and made this a very engaging uh, discussion. Uh, so thank you uh, very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vakar. So in the Q&A, I do see a uh, question uh, by Tarna. Uh, and in case any of our panelists are still online, uh, they, they, they may like to uh, take this question. And the question is uh, with regards to, I think you can read this, in recent years with the uh, digital revolution, we have seen the birth of new financial services such as mobile money. Uh, what are your thoughts on the use of these digital financial services for rural women's financial inclusion and their potential impact on women's productivity? So, so, so uh, anyone who would like to respond on mobile money or its use or if you have examples? Uh, yes, Deidre. Uh, thank you. I think that's, very, that's a very good question. Uh, mobile money has the potential to reach people in far off areas. Um, and I think, especially if you think electronically, a number of countries have experience also with uh, improving targeting through biometric uh, means and biometric identification. And in this way, one can perhaps think of frameworks to target women directly. So I think from that perspective, there's a lot of potential. There are downsides, however, and here I turn to an example from South Africa where cash transfers were transferred via um, biometric identification, where it really became a very electronic system. But that system was abused by uh, other players who, who could, in some senses, uh, take charge of those electronic systems, such as uh, cash loan sharks and the like. Uh, there's some very interesting literature on this in South Africa. So what I'd say is just as on the one side, while it makes things easier and where there's potential for better targeting, there's also potential for this to be easily abused by people who have interests in uh, the money that's stored mobile, in the um, in even just in finding the targeting, uh, f abusing the people who actually have that mobile money. So uh, I think it's a double-edged sword and one just needs to think carefully about the implementation if well implemented, I think this can be an excellent opportunity. Yes, thank you. And, 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 and certainly, uh, I think uh, it, it goes without saying that uh, uh, the devil is in the details. So the uh, learning while implementing uh, or, or uh, conducting very detailed evaluations while you are into the process uh, really helps. Uh, this would, of course, include conducting things like midlines, which can inform the process, as well as, uh, of course, there's a political economy context here as well. So, 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 so a regular political economy analysis, which can inform the program as it is implemented, could, could, could also help here. Um, uh, but, but, but yes, thank you, uh, Dieter. And I don't uh, see any other question uh, for now. So let's uh, just, uh, I think we can now request uh, uh, 
uh, Jenny and our colleagues to probably uh, end the meeting. And, and thank you to you once again and the team uh, as well. Thank you.